Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our outdoor service. Um, we're still adjusting to our new normal here, so um, I want to let you know that there are a few changes to the bulletin, so if things seem out of order, um, they might be. Um, yeah, they are. Um, the announcements and the prayer time will be after um, the benediction when the camera's off, so we will do that later. Um, and we are also, um, it's an exciting day. Um, we have Pastor Tom Kerr here and his wife, Jannie. They're um, she, Tom is bringing us the message from the pulpit. And it's also a backpack blessing day for our students and teachers. And um, we are passing out scholarships. So that will happen after the um, song, This is the Day. So, um, so welcome, and we're glad you're here whether it's online or whether it's in person, and um, we are just so glad to have you here. So come, let us worship God with joyful hearts and thanksgiving, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us pray. Faithful Father, we begin today by giving you thanks. We thank you for this beautiful day, the gentle breeze, the birds singing above us, the hum of life around us. We thank you for your mercy and grace. We thank you for revealing yourself to us through your word. As we open the Bible today, we pray that we would hear your voice. We ask that your Holy Spirit be at work, opening our ears to hear and our hearts to receive your word. May we be transformed into your likeness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Please join me in the response of reading. The eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some were doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I command you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Do you not say, There are yet four months, and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, Lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white for harvest. The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we are preaching. And that if you want us with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call upon him. How they call upon him, in whom they have not believed. How shall they hear without the preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring glad things and good things. So our first song this morning is This is the Day. And your, uh, the words are in the, your bulletin, and we're going to sing it through twice.
am up here to let you know that today is Backpack Blessing Sunday. And of course we've been doing this for several years. And um, I'm just, I'm really excited that we're doing it again today because I think it's really important, not just for the students and the teachers, but for everyone that is involved with schools. And I think that means everyone here and everyone everywhere because we all pay taxes and we all are involved with young people and with teachers and with staff and bus drivers. So it's just really important that we uh, ask God for his blessing on all these people. So I would like for uh, Susan, okay, if she'd come over. She's gonna help me and um, then anyone that has a backpack or is going to be going to school this coming fall, or, well, like next week, and uh, <laughs> or is teaching, if you would, if you don't mind, you can either just stand up where you are or you can come up here because we would like to give you a pen and a little journal that you can write in, either notes that, um, that you need for school or just reflections that at the end of the day you want to write down what happened during school or just you want to maybe make it a grateful journal so you so all those things so if if you would come forward that would be great so we could give these to you if not would you please stand okay obviously we have some people that are being very shy in the back <laughs> so it is Connie's first year as a teacher, so yay is right, and she's very excited, and we're excited for her. I, I am particularly excited since I used to be a teacher. Um, so anyway, would you give them the pens and the pencils? Could, could you walk forward towards your mother? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Tried to make her some of that. So thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yay. And then, um, Reverend Curry, would you come forward and uh, just say a blessing for yeah. everyone? I I just like to say that uh, this this speaks to the heart of myself and my wife. We're thrilled to hear that you're doing this. And I I actually asked my wife if she would come forward. She had. Uh, spoken blessings over the kids through the years, and if you'll just uh, come forward and actually say the blessing here. Okay. So, what I would say to the children, and I stole this from church, and I said, I'm going to use that. Um, there was a minister that said that she um, would lay her hand on her child's heart and speak divine favor and blessing over them on the first day of the school year that they would be brought to the forefront and that they would be noticed among other children and not for any other reason but to glorify God and I thought well I'm going to try that that certainly wouldn't hurt and the testimony that I have from that is you know uh, one of the kids was in a play was not the lead in the play but had the picture in the paper uh, singing a song um, my daughter was in a group of athletic trainers she was not the lead trainer got her picture in the paper as being one of the trainers um, my son um, was in soccer and got his picture in the paper and it was like I notice this is working. This is really working. I mean, you know, God's word works every time. You, you cannot use the word of God and ask for his blessing that it doesn't work. So you two shy ones in the back, and I will say our youngest is also a school teacher, a uh, eighth grade English teacher. And um, even though she rolls her eyes like, Mom, I'm not 13 or 12, she still gets the hand on the heart and the blessing from Mama. And what I say, and I'll just say to you guys, and we'll just, 
um, use this as a point of reference for your children and your grandchildren. And what I say is, Father God, I just ask that your child be given um, divine, supernatural favor and that they be brought to the forefront for your glory. I ask that they do well in school, whether they teach or whether they're a student. I ask that you just clarify their mind and then you give them a wonderful, awesome school year. And I just thank you in advance for that. It worked every year. It worked every year. I, I really um, encourage you all to do that with your children or grandchildren because it definitely worked. And I'm, I'm here to tell you that the outcome was positive. So. this morning to award some wonderful scholarships. Um, many of you know that my father, George Allen, was one of the charter members of the church here along with my mother. And after my father passed away in 1984, we decided to do a scholarship fund. My dad was real big into education for all that could afford it, and this was to help those that could afford it. Mostly because he grew up in East Dayton and was not able to go to college, was not did not have the, the financial means to be able to have higher education. Um, he was able to support his family, but he wanted to uh, you know, make sure that education was very important to not only our family, but to all that had the means to do so. Um, our scholarship fund this year was able to award scholarships to four individuals. Uh, the amount of each scholarship was $250, which much, might not seem like a lot, but it is when you have books and you've got everything else going on. Um, so we hope that this small amount is able to help each of those that are furthering their education. Um, of the four, only one is able to be with us this morning. But I wanted to let you know who all got those scholarships. Um, one of them being um, Mo Maureen Horn. She is going back um, for her special education for um, a uh, master's program So at, to UD, I believe. So Mo was one of them. Um, Kylie Preston, who is um, Janet Mayo's great-granddaughter, also received a scholarship. She's going to University of Cincinnati. And Maya Miller, uh, some of you may remember Linda Riddle and Suzanne Riddle. Um, they are old-time members here of the church, both of them. Maya is Suzanne's child, and she is going to... Um, Wilkes University in Pennsylvania under taken six years for uh, pharmaceutical. So Maya got a scholarship and then the last one is Connie Sinks. Um, Connie is going to Wright State, I understand, uh, for some additional classes for a master's program um, in addition to teaching. So she's going to be pretty busy but we're, um, we're very honored to be able to award all of these scholarships to all of our our young people and their fam their, the families of our, the children of our, of our fam church family. So, Connie, if you want to come forward and get yours, I won't ask you to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. noticed a, a small scrap of paper in your bulletin that's probably fallen out on the floor or got tucked away. Um, as before we've done on outdoor worship, this is to write down something that has been a blessing for you this week. And we'll read these later on. And so if you have a moment, uh, write down a blessing and then we'll put it in the offering plate as it comes around. And so... Um, this morning's scripture reading is from um, Philippians 2, 12 through 18. And we continue to read Paul's letters to the Philippians. He wrote these while, they were, while he was imprisoned, and he wrote these as a means of encour encouragement for um, his followers there in Philippi. And Pastor Karen picked these scriptures out before she left, and I think she kind of leaves them to us as a, a, a word of encouragement also. 
as we go through this time of transition. So I will continue reading. Um, I am reading from the NIV version. Philippians 2, 12, 12 through 18. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, in you, to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I am poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you so you too should be glad and rejoice with me. Thus ends the reading. Let us apply it to our lives. So this morning's offering, um, John, I believe, is going to pass the plate. And in the offering, um, as he collect, receives your offering, you can put your little blessing notes in there if you're able to or we'll collect them at the end of the service also. Please join in singing. He's got the whole world in his hands as John receives your offerings. And I'll cue you on the word. First one, he's got the whole world in his hands. of Bible school, I can't hardly sing that song without wanting to do the motions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think some of you are in the same, uh, same boat as me. So, um, at this point in the worship service, I turn this over to Pastor Tom Kerr, and he will read his scripture and deliver his message. You know, it's interesting uh, as, as uh, we've been, I've been going through the book of Philippians recently, and so I, I learned that you read this scripture, Philippians 2, 1 through 11, last week, right? And, and yet, uh, I just wanted to uh, go through this because there is so much joy in the book of Philippians, which is ironic because Paul is in prison while he's writing the most joyful letter that he has written, the most joyful letter. And so um, it's, it's with this I'll turn to, um, and actually I'm going to be reading out of the, is this the New King James Version? Uh, so Philippians 2, starting at verse 1. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Let each of you look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. 
let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in very form God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. Being in, found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and be, became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. I just want to uh, share share a few things with you, uh, just uh, in, in some sense on a personal note, is that the, the first thing I wanted to share is really out of the book of Philippians, uh, and it, it comes from this, from myself and my wife, Janie, we give thanks for you, for this church. When, when Easter came, was this year, was the first church service that we had attended after coronavirus. And we shared that with you and enjoyed the love and the, the welcome, the peace of Christ that was in this place was undeniable. And it was a joy to be with you. And so uh, out of uh, Philippians 1, verse 3, Paul wrote this. He said, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all of my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I would say this, Dorothy Lane Church, in, in our experience, displays the love and grace of Christ. And so we are thankful for you. You know, the world does not need a lot of a religion, but it needs a lot of Jesus. And that's, that's what we saw in you. And um, in Mark 12, 30, Jesus sums up all of the religious requirements that we love the Lord our God with heart and soul, mind and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. It is that mission to which we are, we are called and we share, and I rejoice in your work in the gospel for that. God has a plan for this church. And, and I love that you've got Jeremiah 29, 11. It's on the wall and the most beautiful thing that I've seen displayed on a wall for this verse that's a favorite of myself and my wife. And you've got it on the front of the bulletin. And, and I just wanted to read that as a proclamation because when we speak God's truth over ourselves, we come in agreement. And God brings more out of that than if we just say, yeah, that's true. But we speak it out loud like he created everything with his voice, with his declaration. And so we come in agreement with the declaration that he has for this place, for each of us. He says, I know the plans I have for you. This is his declaration. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And so we, we come in agreement with what God has said for us, and we see the results much more clearly than if we just casually read those things. And so, um, so I just praise God for you all. In, in regards to um, imitating Christ's humility, you know, there are a lot, of, a lot of ministries and a lot of people that get into ministry, and they get a little bit of God or a little bit of knowledge. And Paul said that knowledge puffs up but love builds up and so you know the puffing up is the ego and the pride and whatever we get involved in we should have a joy in our ministry but we should not have so much ego and pride that we don't see the needs and the people around us and and there is a a knowledge of who god is that we've got to give reverence for from the beginning an understanding of who Jesus is, of uh, that that we value God and humanity both. That we can't let go of either and say, "Is God not present with us? Should we not love those around us?" 
with the love of Christ. That is, that is our call. The sociologists uh, had, had determined that there are ways that people react to one another. They said there are three ways in which people react to one another. They said there's the people people that we talk to like our peers, we talk to as an individual. They said there's the service or transaction people like the cashier, the UPS person, and we, we do a transaction with them and we say something and we're done with the transaction. And then they said that the third group of people was that they're like landscape, like a shrub or a bush, and we walk by them and we don't notice them. This to me is uh, what, what happened in the parable of the Good Samaritan, that both the priest and the Levite walked by as though it was a shrub, someone in need. Because they probably were looking like myself in very task-oriented sense, like we got stuff to do and we're thinking about our task, we can sometimes not acknowledge a need that's before us unless we're asking the Spirit of God to help us to see who's around us, what interruptions in life do we need to hear God speaking to someone in that moment that we need to, need to see. And so it was the Samaritan of all people that was able to see that person as a whole person. And that, that's kind of an indictment to, it was certainly to the Jewish people, but maybe to churches as well, that sometimes we're not paying attention even when we think we're all about his business. And it's like, and, and God will teach us if we're humble. And so in that humility, Jesus, uh, we were told in verse four and then five, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as that of Christ. And that Jesus, though he's equal to God, it says that he did not use that equality as an advantage. And, and I like to think of it like this. Jesus, of, of all people, it's like sometimes we forget the greatness and the holiness and the reverence and the um, respect and who God is that we lose touch with that identity, that we have a right relationship with him based on that. We come casually sometimes to him like we came casually to the landscape of people that we passed by. And I had at the prison 40 verses that I gave to inmates and I said, this is of the nature and character of God. We need to speak it out. And I had them each read a verse and uh, the 40 guys that I called forward and they read verses of the nature of God because I didn't want us to get so casual in what usually comes out of our mouth about God that we forget what the scripture says about who he is. And it was really amazing because one, one man came up and he's like, wow, this is, this is really good. This, this is what I need. It's like, of course it's really good. It's God's word. It's about who he is. God is so good. And, uh, and it was Romans 12, too, that, you know, not to be conformed to the world, but be conformed to the likeness of, of Jesus, that, that he's the one that, that we're following. And so, um, so I wanted to, to say this. It's Jesus did not use his identity as God for his own comfort. He didn't use it for his own comfort. There are many times we get in some kind of position or title or whatever it is that we've got and we get really good with that and we use that power and identity for our own comfort rather than use the power that we have for the influence and the mission of God. So Jesus submitted his comfort to the mission that his father had called him to. And that mission was more important. His mission is a mission of love Romans 12, 9 says that love must be sincere. I was in a leadership conference and one of the speakers said this, the enemy of success is comfort. It's not discipline. It's not other things that get us to move. The enemy of success is comfort. When we get too caught up in our own comfort, we lose track of what the mission was. It's not the lazy boy that gets people any awards in the Comfort is the enemy of success. 
And then there was another leader that talked about how we need stamina to stand through like Jesus did. And he said, the difference between where you are now and where you could be is your ability to endure pain. Your ability to endure pain. To have stamina. To, to stand through like Jesus did. And, and when we've done that, we see, like Jesus, that we get rewards. God opposes the proud and he exalts the humble. And with, with Jesus, God exalted him to the highest place, gave him a name that's up above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So from, from your passage today, I wanted to lift something out. It, this passage says, do everything without grumbling. So again, it's a humble spirit. It's a humble spirit that for us to come without grumbling. Now, that's, that's our natural stuff. You know, that is what we are born with. We grumble when we get up in the morning sometimes. It's like we got aches and pains that we had no place where they should have come from. And yet they're with us. And for us to not grumble, it's like, God, before I get out of bed and complain about my aches and pains, can I acknowledge you? Can I acknowledge your love? Can I acknowledge that you gave me another day, that this is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it? That's, that's a challenge. That's our act of worship, that we worship and acknowledge him in everything. So... Fear and trembling in this passage is this, that we have this right respect for who God is. And we don't take advantage of who God is. He's, he's got so much wonderful love in store for us. But we don't take that for granted. We want to be in a love relationship back with him. And, and that is the way that we live. Now, we're told that, uh, you know, just as we, we know who he is, it's like we've got this new puppy now that uh, we've been training and I am telling you I am trying to train this dog there are times that he's he's only uh, well he's 19 pounds now and uh, what four months old I'm, I, I lost track but anyway he was born in April and we picked him up at nine weeks there are times that He's on the couch and he's looking. And we have a special comforter on the couch because we're trying to save the couch and keep the dog both. And he'll look up at me and Janie said, do you see the way he's looking at you? You see that? And he's like got this love and reverence in his eyes like we would have toward God. So when we're worshiping God, there ought to be that I am so glad to be on the couch with you, God. <laughs> because I love you. It's like, I don't deserve to be on your couch, but you in your grace have called me up here to enjoy your presence. And I am so thankful for that. I love you so much. And so he's got that, but he doesn't take that for granted. So when I call him, he's learning commands that I've learned from inmates that train dogs in prison. He's gonna actually go there and get some training. And, and so we do this, this is sit and this is down. And, and if you don't reward that until he obeys, he's paying attention. He's paying attention. And so he will get down, and then he'll be watching me. And they said, when, when, you, when you reward him, don't use the word treat. Just say, Teddy, his name's Teddy, Teddy Bear. And they said, just, just call his name. And after you call his name and he's paying attention, he does something right, then you give the reward. Not saying, I got a treat for you. The treat is that we're known by name, by our Father. He calls us by name. That is the treat that we get up on the couch with him, that he has good things that he gives to us, that we don't know when it's going to be that he gives us the pat on the head or something else amazing to eat or something to feast on. But the the other thing is is that there is a confidence that we have and it comes from Hebrews 4 it says that we can come boldly before the throne of grace that we obtain mercy and find grace to help us in times of need and so there are times that 
you know, we're just proud to come before God. Like this pop, whenever he's doing this well and he's walking with me, he's walking like he owns the whole neighborhood. He's like, I, I'm, I'm with the master and I own the neighborhood. God has given us dominion. We are his. He's given us this commission that we read. And it's like he's given us dominion. And so there's an ownership that God has given us in his promises that we walk confidently in because we're proud. We get couch time. We get treats. We get confidence. We get help. We get grace. And, and he's with us. And so uh, to, to come back around uh, to the, the last thing is that... Um, we also have to have the stamina to stand in the storm. And so the, sometimes the grumbling is not just the morning aches and pains or whatever else, and I'm tired and I'm asking my body to align with uh, God's purpose and His Spirit in my life. There's other things that we have. And sometimes the battle is for real. And, and the battle comes on us, and we know that there are challenges. One of the speakers at the summit that I was, was in, his name, he's an author, his name is Shola Richards. His mom was from Georgia, I believe, and his dad was from Africa. And he described his dad as Mufasa. He, and he, he spoke, you know, as an African, he, he said, Shola, Shola. And, and he, he said, he gave him this advice one time. He said, and he's like wondering what this was. He said, be the buffalo. He's like, be the buffalo. He said, be the buffalo and not the cow. He's like, thanks, Dad. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? He said, the buffalo, when the storm comes, he faces the storm and stands or walks through it. When the cow, the silly cow, when the cow sees the storm, it runs from the storm, and it's more time that the cow spends in the, in the storm than the buffalo, because the storm is chasing through, and the cow gets more time. So he says, be the buffalo. Stand up to the opposition. Stand in the storm. Face what you've got to face. And, and he was uh, then telling how this has brought blessing blessing in his life to to understand that sometimes fear gets the best of us and we run from what God said my love will cast out perfect love cast out fear and so we stand in his love knowing that he is with us we are never alone never alone in the storm I'm just going to pray and then um, and then we'll we'll pray together the Lord's Prayer. Father, we thank you that you are a mighty and wonderful God, so intimate with us that, that you sent Christ for us. There isn't anything about us that you don't know. You know us perfectly and love us completely. We don't find that anywhere else. And so you alone are worthy of our praise. And so we praise you. We thank you. We we give glory to you for how you care for us, how you welcome us up for special time with you, and how you bless us. We pray your blessing on this body, on each one here, and we pray as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tom. It's time to sing again, and today, uh, we're going to be singing in the garden, and you, the song lyrics are in your bulletin.
bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.